Hey, I'm JD and welcome to my channel. If you want me to do watch work for you and watch my service, get a hold of me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com. jdwatchservice at gmail.com. Make sure you send a picture of your watch, pocket watch preferably, and also take the back off so I can see the movement. I want to be able to see that serial number and have a look at the movement. And let me know what condition the watch is in. Is it not working? Is it uh, not keeping time? Are there broken jewels in the watch? What is the issue with this particular watch? Is it just not run? Does the balance run free? Uh, so the maybe the impulse jewel is broken on it. Could be anything. But let me know and I'll see what I can do. So thank you. Right now what we're going to do is have a look at watch hands. So I had a little challenge recently. And it was with a watch hand. Now... The, uh, the watch hands that you press on to a pocket watch, this is your typical pocket watch here, you press those on to the pocket watch, you set them using a device like this, a hand setting device like this, and you put those down, you just press them down, and with pocket watches it's pretty easy to do it with a hand setting device. If you're going to get into chronographs uh, and watches, then you need a proper tool to set those watches. I actually have one coming in the mail, oh my god. So I got it from AliExpress. It was uh, highly recommended, and it's got the little plungers that you push down. Um, and those plungers uh, make sure that the uh, there's accuracy in pressing the watch hands down. That's for watches. I wouldn't do that with pocket watches because you often have to take the minute hand, and you take the uh, the watch setting device like here, the WSD, and you if this were the minute hand, you're pushing here where it's attached um, to the to the uh, pivot coming up, right? So the, the what, 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 cannon pinion maybe? No. Hour wheel? No. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, you're pressed down like this and then you rock it this way or this way to make sure that you're getting the right leveling of the watch hand. So, and I've got a pocket watch here. I'll just open this up for a second and show you. So here's the pocket watch here. Now you can see the leveling of that hand, of those hands. Now, if I, this is a uh, really nice old pocket watch. I haven't wound it today, so I can just crank this thing around and see if it's, uh, if I can move that around to the 12 o'clock position. Um, this is an old, what is it? It's an AWC Waltham, American Watch Company. Waltham pocket watch, and there it is. Now, as you can see when I come around here, uh, you can see that watch just swinging over top of the hour hand. So that's the minute hand swinging over the top of the hour hand. You have to make sure the hour hand is free of the second hand. So you put the hour hand first on first, then you measure it to see if it's free of the, or you look at it to see if it's free of hitting that seconds hand, because it'll stop the watch. And once it's just free of the seconds hand as you rotate it around, then you put the minute hand on. So, But that's not what I wanted to talk about today. Today I want to talk about actually taking a watch hand and adjusting it. So. Now, if the watch hand is, is bent, and I'm going to bend one here for you. So this is unusual for me to ruin a watch hand, but I'm going to do this anyway, right? So here's a nice old watch hand. It's a minute watch hand. So I'm going to bend this. I'm just going to grab it, and hopefully it's not going to snap. But I'm going to bend it like, like nobody's business. If it snaps, then it snaps. There. So now that watch hand is bent. It's B-E-N-T, bent. So now... You can get a watch hand like this that's bent this way. And usually, uh, because of this, the, the material this is made of, you can just simply grab it and bend it back, right? So if you're brave like I am, you just grab this with your hand like this. It's kind of the same way you are, you're adjusting when you're, when you're trying to flatten out a balance. And I did a video on actually trying to get a balance uh, back to perfect, like perfectly flat and perfectly round. Um, and you're using your fingers to do that as well, and you're not applying any heat. In this case, if this thing snaps, I'm going to laugh, but in this case, you're just simply grabbing it and bending it. So let me get to a different view here. Oh, what am I going to, what do I want to do here? Just grab that hand nice and carefully and just take the hand and uh, just wedge it between your fingies and then bend it back. So you got to kind of work it back. You don't have to apply any additional um, any heat or anything on on it to bend it in this manner so you're bending the flat side of it so it's pretty easy and the hand as you can see is nicely bent back not an issue at all 
Um, and it's the same as bending uh, a balance when you're trying to straighten a balance out. So. so what do you got, buddy? Uh, let me see. There are all kinds of hands. I wanted a bigger, thicker hand. Ah, uh, oh, those are small. I need big, big hands. Big hands. These are nice hands. I don't want to ruin those. Let me grab another hand here. This is the, the search for Red October. Let me see. What do I got here? I think I got a lot of hands in here, too. It's hand day today. I got to put all these back after. What a pain in the butt. Hope uh, Bun Special's doing well out there, Mr. Bun. Um, good times are had by all. So here's a hand. So there's one there. Now, when these hands, time for lecture. It's lecture time. When these hands are bent um, so that they're not bent flat wise. That's bad English. Eh? They're not bent flat wise. They're bent kind of sideways wise. Just get this piece of paper out. So first situation is the hand is like this. There's where it sits onto the watch like that. And then the hand goes like that and then down a bit. And if it's bent up like this or down like that it's easy you take the watch hand like i just showed you and you grab it in your fingers and you kind of bend it you work it up a bit it's not going to break now if the hand is like this and you're looking down on your pocket watch and it's like this and then it's bent like that right i'll just make my pocket watch a little bit bigger here <laughs> then that's working against the flat part of that watch right so and it's not easy to bend that back you just you can't normally bend that back without putting a little bit of heat on it let me give you some examples of me trying to bend it back so there's there's one example and here comes the other example <laughs> there we go so i tried to bend these hands back um without a, one of them i applied heat but too much and the other one i just tried to bend it and neither of it worked and the third time what I did was just touch the hand a bit with heat and then I was able to bend it. So let me just grab one of these and pretend that's a hand, right? It is a hand actually. And what I what you do, let's just see if this will bend for me. No, that's going to snap again. Uh, uh, there, I got a little bit of a bend on that. You see that? A little bit of a kink on that. So that is a bend and you're going to see that bend exaggerated as it goes down towards the pointy part of the watch hand and what you do is you have to have a tool that looks like this okay and this tool is used for many things first of all you can use it if you need to make the hole on the watch hand bigger right and you have to have the right tools to do that or you can hold it you can use it just to hold the uh the hand in place look on there we go grab that and there now that's in the middle and they've got this funky little metal thing that's supposed to tighten it right but this doesn't work at all it's a piece of crap it was invented in 1907 i think by some guy named piece of crap so so what i do is i just wrap this around like that it's the squeeze a matter the squeezometer and you wrap it around like this and then you got yourself your rubber band so this is better than duct tape there you go the duct tape isn't spelt d-u-c-k so now you'd think you could just grab this thing and then bend it like this way right you can't you got to apply just a little tiny bit of heat to this so what you need next is a torch Alrighty then, so here's my burns o -matic torch. So this is a torch, it gets super hot. There's all kinds of don't kill yourself with this torch instructions on the torch. Dangerous, extremely flammable. I'm just going to turn it on for a second for you. you. Just take this and you pull it back a bit, like that. And when I press this button, torch is lit. Scary, scary stuff. Now I already filled, the, filled this up earlier, um, but all you're doing here this material will heat up so fast, right? So, and you want to make sure that you're not pointing it towards something else. Like I got my set of glasses here and I got them on the bench and I'm going to burn this. I don't want the glasses, this, and then the torch it's all lined up in a row like planets, right? So you're going to have a 
a fun time with that. So what you do is make sure there's no fuel around. So look around and see if there's anything that's combustible, right? Better to do this in your basement. Um, and then all you do is you've got to be prepared to bend it, right? So I, you can use tweezers to bend it, or you can use a good set of pliers to bend it. Now I've used pliers before and they probably will work a bit better. So now it's time to blow myself up. Okay, so you got your you, you, you got your hand grabbers, you got your torch, you got your A1, C1, A1 pliers, and you got your bent hand. There's your that's my nickname, bent hand. So I'm gonna try to re-bend this. Now I just want to touch the torch on this for a second. If I do it too long and it cools down. It ends up being harder than it needs to be, so it won't bend back. So just turn that on like this. And then once I've got that on, these are flat here. They're, they're actually, I need, to, I need to go in here and flatten these out a bit more because they're a little bit rough right now. But I'll be grabbing this hand like this and just rotating. Just grabbing it and rotating, right, ever so slightly. If it doesn't work, I'm going to break another hand. I'll show you how it's done. So we turn this on. Like that and then you just touch like that for a second grab that hand with my pliers and then rotate and rotate again Does that work not bad so that straightened it up a bit um, there it doesn't have the kink anymore in it it rotates inside here too, so you got to watch out for that. But it doesn't have the kink in it anymore. So I'm not sure whether I can do a dramatic one here, like just bend one and then bend it back. Right, so let me just get rid of this hand here. Dump the hand and grab another hand that I'll probably be sad to bend this hand. So that's a beautiful hand. Jesus. Do I want to bend that one? How about this one here? I'm going to bend this hand here. Okay, I'm going to bend this hand right here. This one right there. Look at that nice hand. I'm going to put it in my hand grabbing the hand grabber. These are sized too. The holes are sized. So you try to pick the same size. And usually you're broaching the hand to make the hand uh, to make the hand a little bit bigger to fit on the uh, fit on the watch. So sometimes it's too tight. You just need to broach it a bit. And so I've got it snugged in there nicely, and I'm going to apply the band of rubber, the rubber band. I got my Michael Jackson glove on today. So here we go. So I'm going to beat this thing. I'm going to beat it. I'm going to beat it. That's not very funny. So today I fixed an accordion. <laughs> it's my wife's accordion from years ago, and it was losing air. How can accordion lose air? So I checked the bellows and the bellows seemed to be fine. So what it was is the accordion had these little buttons on the side and the and the whole rig for the buttons has two screws and the screws are missing. And darn it, wouldn't the screws come in from the inside of the accordion and these little tiny nuts on the other side and they're gone. So what I did is I used Gorilla Tape and I Gorilla Taped it, right? So now I, I'm going to try to bend this hand against, you know, sideways, not this way. It's easy to bend it. There's the flat part of the hand. It's really easy to bend a hand like that, right? But to bend it like this, then you're going, you're, you're perhaps going to break it trying to bend it. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to try to bend it back. So here we go. Bear with me. I'm going to get a little closer here, just so so exciting. I know. Just calm down. The excitement's going to end in a second. Okay. So grab the hand like this, and I think a one-time bend shouldn't be too bad. There we go. Look at the bend on that. I'm going to take that out just to show you the bend. Okay. Because I think I did a good job. Now, this hand, I, this gentleman, I did his watch for him. His name was Brian. Um, and I didn't, I didn't re-bend his hand back. It was crooked. And I don't know whether he wanted it left like that because it's in a family heirloom. So first of all, I don't know how these hands get bent when they're in the watch. It makes no sense at all, especially in our hand. So there you go. There's the hand. All bent to crap. Look at that. Look at the bend on that thing. So now I know that if I try to bend that back, 
just grab it and bend it back, it's going to snap. You're not going to be able to bend that back. So what you want to do, like I said before, here's the procedure. You put the hand into one of this, these, this device here. Now look where that bend is. And it's right where the kink is. So I've lined that up with the hole like that. Now I got a problem here because the bend is really close to where the where this went in the hole. So what I'm going to try to do, and this is like risky as hell, but I'm going to try to I'm going to try to grab it from the other side like this, and then leave a little bit out like that, so it's flat like this. So I'm going to do this just to make a point. What I'd want to do is heat that up now, right? So let's get the rubber band of rubberness bandness. Please write me if you like my videos. If you don't like my videos and you want me to stop talking about watchmaking, then I'm good with that. <laughs> now, putting the rubber band on is an art. So let me get this rubber band on. I should probably cut the video. I'll tell you what, I'll speed it up. When I get the rubber band part. Anyway, I was able to stop the uh, air from coming out of the accordion. So that's in there pretty good. So look that in there. Move that around a little bit. Yeah, that's not moving. You just check the other end. And it's in there pretty solid, as you can see. Now, again, I want to take, take this here, grab it, and then rotate my arms like this to move it, right? And if I rotate my arms, I've got control. If I just try to do this with one hand like this, I probably don't have as much control. So I'm just going to flash the flame right by this really quickly and then try to bend it. So I'm going to put this thing up a bit and because I really don't want to burn things. So there we go. So I'm just going to flash this flame again and very quickly. Turn it on. Try not to burn all your cool stuff. And then... really quickly grab this like that before it cools down too much and then just move it back ended up bending it too far too far i bent it the other way <laughs> so there you go i did bend it back though so it's now bent the wrong way so that was a shitty rebending but uh, but uh, you get my point so I can perhaps flatten that out now a bit. And so it's bent back from where it was. Um, it was actually bent that way, and I think I just overdid it. So the uh, so that's that worked, but um, it should be straighter than that, right? So I would reheat that and bend that back. See, it's still got a little bit of a kink in it, so it's not too bad. But it was a big kink before. So, so that, my friends, is the technique for bending hands. Um, this thing is magnetic. Look at that. Grab up. Magnetic. Not good. I put that through the demagnetizer. Put it aside. So that's my technique for rebending hands. Again, um, it's dangerous unless you have a lot of extra spare hands. Uh, if you don't have spare watch hands and you go to do this, there's a high probability you're going to do what I did before, which was just snap that hand. Uh, if you try to bend it twice, it's going to snap. It's not going to work. When you apply heat to that hand, you just apply it, apply it for a millisecond. Don't let it get red, so because it takes it takes like a less than a millisecond before that the hand itself gets red from the heat. Okay, you can apply it a bit indirectly if you want. Um, you can heat up the device you're holding the hand in on, and um, and then heat the device up, uh, and then the hand will get hot, and then you can try to to uh, to move it. Um, but what you're what you're doing is um, you're not tempering the metal, or are you... Yeah, I can't remember. Anyway, you're working the molecules in the metal, and you can. And if, they're, and if the metal gets soft, and you move it and it stays soft, it's not a problem, because it's a pocket watch hand, and there's nothing going to move that unless someone touches it. Uh, the hand I was talking about was bent, and it was an hour hand that was bent. I do not know how that hour hand got bent. That's just abuse of the watch from the previous watchmaker. Um, and just piss poor watchmaking, I think. So that's what I call it. That's my my uh, my uh, abbreviation for crappy watchmaking. So that's piss poor watchmaking. So so that's that's that. So uh, one more little story before I 
closer down. So I was working on this um, tag um, tag watch. Let me just move this over here for a second, and I'm going to adjust my camera. All right, there it is. So this is a tag 7750 uh, watch. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous watch. Let me turn this around a bit. And I've got it. I've got a. Um, I've got a glass over this, so I don't leave it in the dust. But I'm waiting for the center seconds hand to come in. So it's a point two five diameter hole on the center seconds hand, and I picked it up from Perrin uh, Watch Supplies out of Toronto. And thank you very much. Um, I also went to Somal or so so Somal. I think Somal. S O U M A L. Anyway, they sent me a set too. So. So I'm going to make sure it uh, goes back on. It's for my uh, friend Bill. And Bill, we're going to make sure that's on good. Now, I have done a lot of reading on how to put these center second hands on. So the first thing you got to make sure is that the uh, watch is well supported from the back. Because if you push that center second hand on and it's not supported from the back, there's a chance that you will uh, push the jewel out, which is not a good thing. So the, the other thing is... Um, It'll go right on, but you want to probably take a little tiny bit of um, glue. Now, I don't normally like using glue, but that watch hand, it snaps back. Okay, so when you set it and you let it ride, you let it move like to like this. To I'll go this way. You let it go, and, and you it's all the way down the bottom, and some nice guy presses the side button to stop it and presses the other button. That thing swings all the way back from the bottom. And all the way to the top and that's a lot of energy there's a cam a heart cam in there that causes that to go back into place um, and if it's not super tight right then it will move slightly over and every time you do it it gets looser and looser right and then eventually the thing falls off I did a lot of reading on this because I don't do a lot of repair of these particular chronographs I did the repair on this one here but I would recommend put some thread lock on it like a, I put a medium strength this guy here, medium strength. And I did that for the, the top hand here. Just, I took a needle. So I grabbed a needle. Let me grab this. I put a needle into a vise. So it's like this. And then I took the tip of that needle. I sharpened that needle up. And then I poured some of this stuff onto, uh, onto a piece of, it was actually a business card I had. And I poured it on there a little uh, more than I ever would ever need. And then I took this needle and I dipped it into the puddle, right? And I took out uh, the smallest amount in the world, right? So now, as I've mentioned before in my videos, when you're using oilers, if you put the oiler in like this and you pull it out slowly, it take, it doesn't take a lot of oil. It doesn't grab a lot of oil. If you pull it out fast, you'll, there's going to be a ball of oil on the end. So there's times when you're oiling things that you want to pull this thing out fast to get the ball of oil. And there's times that you want to just pull it out nice and slowly, like that. So, I look like I got lipstick on. I think it's this filters I got. The chromo filter makes me look like I got lipstick on. Nice. Anyway, so, <laughs> so you do that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. So you pull it out and then turn the hand around. And then you put just a little tiny bit on the hole of the hand, on the pipe. Don't try to put the oil onto the pivot on the end here. That's the dumbest thing you could possibly do. And I'm talking the world's smallest piece of material on that. Like it's micro you're putting on because that's going to go on there. You don't want to put so much that it's going to just ride down the pipe and hit the other parts of the watch. Um, and, and just a tiny, tiny bit. So it's an art to do that. But that's my uh, recommendation. That's what I'm going to do with this watch here when that hand comes in next week. And we'll get this thing back in repair. So, so that's all I got today. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you uh, enjoyed it, please like my videos. Um, this summer, I'll be doing more work on pocket watches. Uh, I had a very, very, very busy uh, winter with not a lot of time, even on the weekends. So I kind of slowed down in the watchmaking. I still did a few. Um, I did uh, three in one in three days. So um, again, if you want me to. Uh, work on your watch let me know my rates are very 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 reasonable um, I even do jewel work and jewel replacements uh, I pretty much can do anything on a pocket watch when you're talking watches you end up having to buy parts and replace them because you can't make those parts because they're usually made by machines so but for pocket watches I can pretty much recover everything 
The only thing I haven't been able to do so far is unwarp a warped what's it called? It's where the it's where you've got a hunter watch with a lid and you snap on the crystal and it's got the bezel and the bezel is slightly warped and you snap it on and it's still warped and then you got to modify the crystal. So the only thing I can't do is modify a crystal. So everything else um, is doable and I haven't failed it yet. If I can't repair your watch, then I won't charge you anything. That's the deal. So, And if I repair your watch and, 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 it, and it rise back at your, at, your, uh, at your destination and the postage guys have been really mean to you and you want to send it back to me for repair, I'll do that for free. Not a problem. That's, uh, but you'll have to pay for postage. Otherwise, why am I doing this? Because it usually takes me... To do a watch, a pocket watch properly with the case and all the cleaning and everything else you do, you're probably looking at about five hours of work, depending and if you've got maybe four hours of work. If it's a simple cleaning of a, of a movement um, with no problems at all, zero problems at all, it's probably about two hours, th two to three hours of the work because they still need to clean the case and stuff, right? So, and then oil everything. Um, but if you've got jewels that I have to replace, the jewels alone are not cheap, and to find them is, is difficult. I do have a collection that I have, and I can, I can modify jewels, actually, to uh, fit on your watch. So I can make the diameters smaller, can't make them bigger. Um, I haven't figured out how to make the holes bigger yet, but I'm sure I could figure that out. And I do, and I do lathe work, so I do work on the watches and use my lathe, and I'm able to, you know make balance staffs for watches that are funky that no one ever thought they could ever find a balance staff for and I've done that. I haven't built I haven't done a balance staff in a couple months but uh, it's always good I need to need to get back into my training again so I know how to do it and and basically if you fail at it you just do it again so I wouldn't charge you for the second shot at my balance staff making. <laughs> so Anyway, that's all I got. I'm talking a lot today, and uh, thanks for watching my videos, and please subscribe. Um, and uh, every now and then I put a short on with flight simulation, and I put a video on with flight simulation. Uh, I apologize for all the watchmakers out there, but I'm going to keep making videos on, on uh, watch repair. So I'm JD. Again, welcome to my channel. Um, if you want me to do work for you, jdwatchservice at gmail.com. And I've done a lot of pocket watches for a lot of people, and I haven't had anybody complain. So thank you very much, and have a great day.